<laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. It is your girl, Raquel May David, and I am here with my amazing co-host, David Sanchez, and we were meant to be. Uh, we are so excited to have the room open tonight. Hey, Rain. Hey, Rain. The, the, the call is going to be open. <laughs> the call is going to be open until about 8, 805, 810. We're going to get started right around then. <laughs> and if you have any questions or concerns, you can definitely start while we are allowing everyone in the room. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful. These lights are on and I just got hot. It just get it just out of nowhere. I got hot. <laughs> <laughs> and hot outside too. That's probably why. You know what? In Texas, we're actually having a cold front right now. So it's a little chilly, which I'm okay. I'm in with. Texas too. Yeah, I'm in Colleen. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, I'm in the today. Dallas area. Oh, I was just out there. I was in um Plano. Oh, okay. That's not too far from me. Yes, yes. I was in Plano nice. this weekend for an award show um, for my TV show. It was super duper exciting. So I got to go to 12 Cuts. Have you ever been? 12? Brazilian steakhouse. Oh, that's a Brazilian steakhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where the um the brunch was for the award show for the network, and it was really really nice. Okay, yeah, that sounds really nice. Did you enjoy yourself? Chell, me and all my wigs. We had such a good time, darling. It was just so <laughs> amazing. Mm hmm. I got to eat. I got to say, my husband never takes photos. Like for the first like three years that I was doing um zooms everyone thought that I was making up my husband <laughs> uh -huh. he's a real person right so I actually got to record him sitting there holding my purse he's like I know my duties I'm holding the purse <laughs> oh <laughs> yes that's perfect <laughs> like, well, thanks babe for holding the purse so it was a lot of fun do you guys have any questions about the platform all right, have you already sent out any letters? Where are you um, in the process? I have some questions. Okay, sure. What questions do you have? Um, so my first question is, uh, I have a client that's dealing with identity theft. Uh, mm -hmm. They've already filed a police report and the FTC report. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm just wondering, what would I do to remove all the fraud on their credit report? So... Oh, wait, I did it this way. So you're saying that they already did an FTC report because there was legitimate fraud on their account. Yes, and they filed a police report as well. They and spoke they to a detective and everything, and they got a, a report from the police. Okay, and the accounts that are listed there are legitimately not their accounts. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so you can use the process, but I'm going to be honest. My question would be what happened, why the FTC report didn't work? Because if he did it himself and put all the accounts on there, did he submit the police report with the FTC report? No. So I would suggest for him to do that. That Now, that's outside of the Panda platform, but just as a person in the space of doing credit, if we have legitimate fraud that we know his identity was stolen and he has the police report, I would put the FTC report with the police report and submit it together with a list of all of the accounts that were legally, that were not his. Does that make sense? Yes. Because that in makes this sense. case, it's saying this person legitimately had identity fraud. Yes, and they legitimately did have identity. Mm -hmm. That's like multiple things that they didn't, credit cards, uh, mm -hmm. apartments, like leases, uh, loans, like, and they, it was all like, they got their identity stolen, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure why he wouldn't send the police report with the identity, with the FTC report, but I would have him resubmit that documentation if we're knowing and saying that this is illegal. But if okay. you want like an in-depth 
process of how to instruct your client how to do the FTC, you can definitely book a call and I'll be happy to go through that. That just would not be in the system. If you're just wanting to leverage the system to help them because they have other debts, you can still use the same flow that's in the in the training tab. Have you already downloaded the flow? Uh, yes, and I've already uh, sent off like I think I've done like three rounds for two separate clients mm -hmm. uh I've got I've got some results back but I, I just didn't know how to go about it with this client because it's identity theft but yeah. so there's really nothing I can do on my end until they do the uh follow the police report with the FTC report yes if he has a, if he has a police report I always recommend that they send it with the FTC report because it makes it more legitimate um, especially if he has supporting documents, because sometimes the police will have those supporting documents as well that they can attach. Um, I had a client who her whole mailbox was stolen. So like all, like a bunch of her credit cards that were being renewed at the time had gotten oh, taken. Goodness. Yeah, yeah so oh my goodness. had to go and go through the process in totality. So absolutely. I hope okay. that helps. It does. Um and so do I need to, like, is there any way I can use uh, Dispute Panda to, like, after they do that, can I? Yeah, you can still use the flow that's in that's in there for him. What I'm just saying is that I would let that FTC and the police report go first. Like, resend okay. it together and then yeah. wait the I would wait 45 days see what happens because normally if you're doing the FTC report with the supporting documents that confirm that there was legitimate fraud it should actually wipe away those accounts within I, I think it's like 24 to 48 hours yes, it should. okay yeah. and who do I submit the reports to or who does the client submit the reports the to the FTC and the police report do they send them to the credit bureaus yes. or Mm -hmm. okay so they take okay. the ftc report and the police report and then they're going to send them to the credit bureaus correct okay got it and, and if, if it were me i would have them send that police report to all of the creditors as well that way they know it's fraud but again it, that that would be how i would help that client is let them know like this is what you should be doing okay and do they just like attach a letter with it like they can. Um, so, so this is outside of the scope of tonight's call. So I can drop my information. And if you want to book a call to completely go over it, it'd be my pleasure to help. It's just, a, it's not within the system. Does that make sense? So this is yeah. a system call, but I uh, will can, go ahead and drop it. So yeah. Can, I'm sorry yeah, about that. Get that link. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I want to help. But I'm like, wait a minute. It's a little sticky because we got to dive in. <laughs> I've, I've been looking for your link I just didn't save it the first time because I've been wanting to book a call so that's perfect no I'm going to save no it right worries. now yeah and bring, bring the client file I like to go over files honey so if you got something you got a isms or a schisms I'm here I'm here to help as much as possible Did thank you, have you. Any other questions that are outside of that FTC report question uh, I guess my second one is with uh, student loans. How like would I just follow the flow, the uh, most effective flow for to dispute student loans for a client? Yes, you can. So either either the old flow or the new flow would still work for you um, on your particular client. I either use the blue or the red uh, because I like the flow and I love the paralyzed attack. The paralyzed touch is what I love. So yes, either one of those two flows will work for you. And the new flow that's in the system has also been getting me results when it comes to um, student loans and bankruptcies. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. That was very helpful. My pleasure. My pleasure. All righty. Rain is amazing. All right. I think, uh, Lake is it Lakeisha? I said it right. Lakeisha? What questions you have, my Yes, life? that's great. Um, I just, you know, got started with the software. Um, and the question that I do have is my clients are trying to upload or import their report into the portal. And it doesn't have it. Do they send their downloaded reports to me and I upload it? Or how does that work? 
So do, let me ask the question. Do you have the pro or the free version? The pro. Okay. So your client can only give you your username and password. You are supposed to import the report in on your end. So your client okay. doesn't upload anything at all except for their IDs okay. and their supporting documents. You okay. need to get the username and password of whatever software they're using. If it's with uh, anything outside of Credit Dino, you would have uh -huh. to, if it's smart credit, you would have to go in, get the HTML and then put it in and I'll show you guys how to do that. If it is identity IQ, my score IQ, uh -huh. um, you would have to physically um, upload the file and I can show you that in a moment as well. Yeah, I did it with identity IQ. There you go. So you would have to actually download the HTML and then input it, like upload it in the file here. Okay. It doesn't allow them to do any of that stuff because that's processing side. So uh -huh. the only thing that they can upload is their supporting documents. They could sign in their person. contract and that's it. Yep. Okay. So basically, if that's, so even if I upgrade it to the any other service, that, that's just across the board? So yes, so no matter who you're with, no matter what mm -hmm. platform you're with, the client does not upload their credit report. Okay. You still have to have, no matter no matter if you're using five, like there are 500 different softwares out there. Well, I only uh -huh. like four of them, but <laughs> no matter which software <laughs> you use, yeah. you still as the credit processor, you would have to upload it unless you have a DIY platform. A DIY platform normally has the integration where once they sign up for the credit monitoring, because there's only one credit monitoring that's linked to that uh -huh. DIY software, that's the only okay. time the client quote unquote uploads it themselves. So if you're not using DIY, if you're using Dispute Panda, CRC, any of the other ones, you physically have to import the credit report. Okay, so basically both of them have it downloaded. So I just need them to send it to me and then I you upload it. You need them it. to give you their username and password. And I, okay, I and have I them send it to you because sometimes okay. they do not send you the HTML file, so it will not work. Okay. As okay. a person in business, you need to have their username and password because you do not need to wait on them to go right. in and pull the report. So regardless okay. of how you're doing it, you have to make sure if you're using the other one, smart credit, you don't need the last four of the social, but the mm -hmm. other one and, and credit dino, you don't, but the other ones you do. So when your client signs up with you and they sign up for the credit monitor, the credit monitoring, there should be an email that goes out or during the consultation, you let them know, I need your username and password for whatever credit monitoring you're on. And if they're not under your credit monitoring, you need to make them switch to be under yours so you can get that affiliate payout. Okay. Okay. So basically, I would. it's better for me to just try to be affiliate for the um, Dino. It doesn't matter which. I have affiliates for all of them. So it doesn't, if you, okay. I personally only use credit dyno, like when you, when they book a call with me, it only uh -huh. has the option for credit dyno. That's the only place that they have when they book a call with me. But that's because okay. I like the low overhead. I don't have to pay for the letters if they're with credit dyno, but no matter who you with, if you want to get a, an affiliate link with um, identity IQ or my score IQ, that's completely fine. What I'm saying is that you have to make sure that you are getting the username and password because if you do not, you're leaving yourself out there where, where when it's time for you to pull their next round, you're waiting for them to get back to you. Gotcha. And we're not okay. doing that. Okay, understood. understood. And I, in, in my service agreement, my schedule fees lets you know if I have to try and pull your credit report twice, I charge you a fee. So it's in your best interest to keep it paid. Yeah. So I don't have to yeah. worry about it. Right. So I have the access, Definitely. I have the username, we're good to go. Gotcha. Great question. Okay. All right. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Hey, Mr. Mar is it Marcus? Yep. Hey, Mr. Crawford, where you been, friend? <laughs> hey, Raquel. How you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? How can I help today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Um, need your expertise. Um, mm -hmm. Is is uh, the Sweet Panda had the ability to, if I bring on a VA to, for the VA not to be able to have access to the uh, the social the driver license or the social security uh, card up in the documents? Is there any way to block that out? So no, not necessarily. And here's why. Hold on, let me. 
That's a great question. So credit that note. So here's the thing. When your client comes in, and let's say this is the VA, right? That has access to it. Mm -hmm. This document is going to be grayed out. So for them to see it, they would have to physically click on it to see it. Correct. Right? There's no way not to see it because of the fact that it has to be in the supporting documents. Even if they go through, once they get to the attack, remember those IDs are in the attack. So if they're printing it for you, if they're faxing it for you, if they're emailing it for you, they'll always have access to their identification. Okay. So there's no way to not do it on, and there's no way to go through the system without having those supporting documents in. Like it won't even let you get to the, the next phase. So what I what I personally suggest is doing the um the, the NDAs. Yeah. yeah. That way you can have a you can have them CYOA uh yourself to make sure that you're good. Um but yeah, that that would be the only thing cuz once the documents go up here, it's clickable and not only that if they finish the attack and they download it, they have access to the documents and all the supporting documents anyway. And I guess one one last question. Um, when you're doing updates and you send your client update, does the update uh, does that share um, report work? Does that, that does that button work now in regards to for, for sharing the report from this portal? When you say share the report, what do you mean? Uh, it thought, wasn't I, working before. Well, I guess you share from there to there. Uh, I thought it was a share button. No, when you hit the share button, it gives you the download option. And you can download it. I thought one time it was a share thing where it shares to the email from, from that point right there. Mm -mm, not that I know of. It's always been the download option. See, it says share via download. You can always download it and then you can send it over. Is that when you process your, your clients for sharing, their, uh, sharing the, the updates with them on a monthly basis? Um, yes, I do take this information and I do share it with them, but I have a form. So I don't, this information that's here, I download it. I send it to my VA so they can put it in my, um, media marketing and mm -hmm. then my social media marketing. And I also put it on my timeline, but I don't, um, I have a different form that I have printed out because now I tell my clients where they started and where they are. So that if their numbers fall, they have a clear understanding of why it fell. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I do it. But yeah, you can still click share, but it doesn't go to the email. It downloads. So you would have to physically email it to them. Okay. Copy that. Okay. Great questions. Okay. Okay. Um, Michael was first and then Tom, because Michael dropped it in the comments before Tom raised his hand. My bad. Hey, Michael, what question do you have tonight? I, I just, I just have a few questions. Um, so my, I'm coming over from CRC from Credit Repair Cloud, which was, mm -hmm. it was okay. And then I had um, things going where Prodigy Surge, they just didn't have the back end like you guys have. So mm -hmm. I see, I seen on there that um, with the pro version, right? Cause I want to bring everybody over that I'm, I'm going to switch my merchant account as well too, right? So my first question is, is what merchant account do you guys accept for the subscriptions and to accept payments on the platform? Um, so authorized.net is the only merchant service that they use right now on the system. Um, I There's some people that are with a company called Proven that we recommend. And there's another company called Goat that you can utilize that kind of partners with authorized.net to get you coverage. You can also see if you're a bank, depending on where you have your business bank account, if they can support you as well. Well, is, it does authorized.net, because I I had trouble getting my first merchant account uh, for because I it was my business was labeled as a credit repair company right so is is with authorized.net is that an issue still yeah that's why I told you those two companies that pair, that partner with authorized.net so if you go to proven or if you go to goat they actually are like mm, how can I put it they they are partnered with authorized.net so we're going just a through that correct and they give you the support. So I personally am with GOAT and my my code and all that stuff is with authorized.net. So I have an API code, a transaction key, all of that stuff. 
Okay. And then um, everything is, everything could be done through there. Once, once the letters are generated, right. Um, um, is there an option to send them out with you guys or do I have to put them out and do it myself? Nope. You can send it out here on the system. All you would have to do is when you generate the letter for the client under the attack option, it actually has a mail out button. So when you click mail out, you would select if you want it to be certified mail, you can change it. You just have to make sure you have the right amount in there and you can have the system mail it out for you. And it can be double-sided, single-sided, and you'll know what the prices are beforehand. Okay. Um, and then my last question is, how how hard is it to get approved for GOAT or Proven? I was approved within... It took me four days because I didn't understand a question. I like to be honest with y'all. So, <laughs> so the question that they kept asking me was send proof of chargebacks and I had never had a chargeback so I did I kept sending them like I don't have chargebacks I don't have chargebacks I don't have an answer so what they told me to do is to just go to my section switch it to chargeback and then send it over because they want to know like have you had chargebacks have you had returns refunds things of that nature on top of the statements of what you've already done um, so that kind of caught, caught me and they were the only ones that accepted me because at the time my credit score was below a 600. So it cost me a little, like it, they did do like a hold. So that's why I don't have an issue with GOAT. Uh, proven also will help you. I believe you have to be at a 600 credit score with Proven though, or above. Okay. 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 Any that's all questions? I got. You no, are amazing. It. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, bye. Bye. All right. Hey, Tom, you're up next. How can I help? Oh, when um, he said bye, he meant bye for real. Y'all, he left me. I oh, don't my even goodness. know. Did you? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What you said? Oh, I, I do have a quick question based on what he just asked. Um, uh -huh. uh, with the, the credit scores, do they allow co-signers to, to, to get a better rate or get approved? Oh, that's a great no. question. I'm not sure because... Um, I, I'm assuming if you have a business partner in the business, I don't think it would necessarily be a problem, but that's a great question that I've never thought of. Okay. Um, that's I cool. will definitely shoot them an email. Okay, great. And see. Well, I sent you an email today. I don't know if you got it, but I, I kind of had my own question to answer, but I'm going to ask anyway. So. I went in today, got the uh, the credit report uh, pulled up and ready to send the first attack in. And and I remember in the training, go go nerve attack. So I generated the letter and I was like, well, that's kind of. So then I thought, OK, well, the pinwheel, because you said the more aggressive, uh, which I want to be, uh, that's when how how do we know when they are going to charge that $17 because it didn't do it when I set up the nerve attack, but when I did the pinwheel, it came out, which was fine. So you only get one round of attack for free. So if you choose okay. to do two letters in one day, okay, you're going to get one letter for free and the next letter would be, uh, um, would be a charge. Now here's the situation. When you're going through the flow, you don't want it to be aggressive all the way. So you want to make sure that your flow, like you, you got to think about it like a conversation, right? Well, when I said that, I'm just going by what the red flow is. It's just, yes. it, it, and then that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay, cool. So you're yeah. using the red flow, but yeah. you said you picked one. So were you doing a different flow when you did the first letter? I be honest, I don't know. I was just <laughs> trying to figure it out. So, you know, it, it set it up. Uh, it, it, I mean, it charged me on the, uh, the pinwheel. So right, but letters. that's because you did two letters in one day, correct? Right. Yes. So my question was the first letter that you originally tried to use was what uh, was what letter? It was the nerve. Okay. The nerve and attack. and that was on which attack? The blue attack or the red attack? Uh I don't know. Okay. So what we want to do is we don't want to waste money. So I, I right. don't get me wrong. I think $17 is fine. No, but I, I, that's why I'm, I want to find out because I don't want to make it. If it was a mistake, I don't want to do it again. So yeah, that's, 
Gotta right. That. So you can only do one letter. So what you what right. you want to do is before you start picking the attack, figure out what flow you're going to use. It's completely fine if you okay. do a red attack with one client and then a blue attack with another client. Okay. Or if you go with the brand new attack that's out now with a whole nother client, right? Because all of these flows work work well. They're right. just different options because some people want to do certified and some people don't. Okay. So when you're looking, you want to make sure that your um, hold on, let me see. Did you David, can you drop the old flow in the system for me? Because I don't think I have it saved on this computer. Hold on, let me see. Um uh, dispute oh i do have it okay boom so for those of you guys that are on here that may not know what i'm talking about when dispute panda first came out we had different flows it was the black attack white attack blue attack red attack all the attacks were good but what took place where people were asking additional questions like when do i go to the secondary bureaus or uh, what do i send out certified or can you give me a flow that's not certified so what I need everyone to do is whether you're using the new flow or you're using the old flow, be very clear on what you're doing and work that particular flow all the way out. So to Tom's point, he's saying, originally I did the nerve attack, which is the blue. He did the blue one, right? So, yeah. and then he switched and he decided to do the pinwheel. Well, because he did both of those on one client in the same day, you only get one attack for free every 35 days. Right. So with that being said, because he had already selected the nerve attack, the system gave him that free round of attacks first. And then he went back in the system and said, well, wait a minute, I want to do red because it's more effective and I'm going to do the pinwheel letter. So now the system is saying, okay, well, we already did, you already used your freebie, so now we're charging you. Well, so that's fine because I I didn't realize the first one was free anyway, so I didn't really lose anything. You so. done been on these calls a multitude of times, and you no, said you I just my second real every call. Every I mean, I've been on once or twice. But, okay, 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 I'm gonna let you be great. I'm so, uh, two more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, the uh, he's got a lot of addresses, so I guess mm -hmm. we got to do a, a static letter for personal information. Do we do that before or after we send the first attack? You can do it at the same time. Same time, okay. Yep, so you can, act, since you've now done the pinwheel, as long as you have money in your bank, you can go back in and do the static letters. It also has personal information. Also, the letters that you print should have personal information info on it as well. Okay. Um, And you can go ahead and... Um, send out the static letters to the secondary bureaus like you're supposed to. Okay. It will have that there. And also in the static, I believe that there is a personal information letter there for you. Let me check right now. Yeah, it says personal information. Yep. And so you can that. click on that and send it out as well. Okay. And then do that as long as well as the child support, you, we can send at the same time. Everything can go out at one time. You got okay. it. Okay, good. And then I noticed like on the um uh the the tack that I did the pinwheel, it uh it it printed m multiple um envelopes because there were multiple pages. So if there's two envelopes then there's two separate pages that got to be mailed separately, is that correct? That is correct. Normally the envelopes are supposed to match the letter sequence. Okay. When you go in like, um, hold on. Doo, doo, doo. So when you go to mail out, you should be able to see how many letters are for that one credit bureau. Okay. So this one is three, this one is three, but this one is four. So you should have, so that means I should have four envelopes for Equifax, three for Experian and three for Transit. Okay. And then if we decide to have the system do it, what's the, is it the turnaround time the next day to get them out or what's, how's that work? Um, so if the letters are printed, are sent over in the system before 12 p.m., it goes out the same day. After 12 p.m. PST time, which is West Coast, it goes out the next business day. 12 p.m. Pacific time? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Or three, my time. <laughs> okay. You got it. Okay. And then we just need to have enough credits in order to pay for the mail through the system. Correct. Correct. And if okay. you don't have enough, you can exit the client. Just click on the balance button 
and yeah. you can load the money yeah. up and then go back to the client. You okay. got it. Cool. All right. You answered all my questions. Can my I pleasure. My pleasure. All right. There was a question in the chat that said the merchant processors are called GOAT and Proven. That is correct. Authorized.net is the main hub, I guess you can say, that everyone kind of uses to process. So authorized.net will not some will not work with credit repair companies directly. So there are partner companies that you can run through that will allow you to utilize the authorized.net system. Great question, Keisha. Um, and I will yeah, answer the, the next question. question, but hey, what question do you have, my love? It's just a general question. I'm, now, this is my mm -hmm. first time being on here. I'm just trying to find out. Someone took me to court for credit card, and I do have a judgment against me. I was in a hospital during that time. Um, mm -hmm. They went to court on it, and I did take my, well, I had someone to take my information in there, medical, you know, information stating that I was in a hospital. So how do I go about um, handling the judgment? Should I just pay it, or I don't know what to do? Um, So that would... So I can tell you that the system can help you with the actual account itself. That mm -hmm. is a little bit outside of the call today. I can drop my information and I don't have a problem booking a call to go over specifics with that because okay. that's a judgment question that is, hey, should I pay the judgment or should I negotiate it? That's going to mm -hmm. be based on a, a lot of factors statute uh, like of course the statute of limitation will not apply in this particular case because of the judgment but there might be other grounds that you might have accessibility to work on when it okay. comes to the judgment and the type of judgment that is there you may mm -hmm. have other breathing room so um I can have someone on my litigation team and kind of go over what your options are depending on what your state but that's kind of outside of the system scope um, okay. system wise, you can send disputes if there are errors that are on the paperwork, yes, the, whether it's first party or second party, but okay. how you would handle the judgment would be different based on your state. So we would have to dive in a little bit more. So I'll drop my information. And if you want to book a call, we can dive in and I can have my litigation person help. Okay. Thank you okay. so much. I appreciate you. It is more than my pleasure. Okay. Keisha's mm -hmm. question in the chat was, I have a personal question regarding something on my credit. Is there an email I can send my question to with the attachment of what I'm seeing on my credit report and the best way to handle it? So you can reach out to customer service. Um, I Normally they will tell you to do your attack flow. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one call. I did drop my booking link in the chat so you guys can definitely leverage that. Um, and it'd be my pleasure to look over the the account and give you some, some letters if you need. Um, Tom says, what does RTS mean? Oh, the return to sender is what RTS means. So hold on, let me... Do, do, do. It's my pleasure, it's my pleasure. So the return to sender, I'm sorry. Yeah. The return to sender is what RTS means. Um, I don't ever use it. I make the return to sender be, um, I normally make the return to sender be my company, uh, but that's because I have a power of attorney. It depends on how your business is set up. If you do not have a power of attorney, you can have it be the customer. Um, a lot of people sometimes make the return to sender the actual credit bureau itself because if you did not put the right amount of stamps on it it will still get delivered <laughs> as a hack even if you don't have enough stamps and i have done that before okay y'all so I've so when it when it says yes to return to sender is it meaning to use the bureaus or the customer is you can either use the bureau um because the letter printout should give you an option so sometimes right. on the letter printout it will give you it will give you the one where the return to sender is the actual credit bureau and then another time will give you the, where the letters is just for the actual um party so the client okay. that you're using yep so that we would do that on the second so mm -hmm. I, okay all right good you got it thank you you got it is my pleasure it's my pleasure. all right so we already 34 minutes in any more questions before well let me ask i see that we have some new faces some old faces how is everyone on the system like has everyone been utilizing the system does anyone need a walkthrough on how to do anything specific because dispute pen and night is all about getting okay is there a way that we can backdate the letters 
Oh, so Keisha's brand new. Cool, Keisha. I'm so glad you brand new, honey. We finna get into it tonight, all right? Um, Keith, the answer to your question is if you want to backdate the letter, then you would have to put it in a PDF editor and then you'd be able to make edits to the letter accordingly. But the system is only going to use the date in which you're processing. Great question. All right, well, y'all, we need to welcome Ms. Brown. Hey, girl, hey. Thank you for pulling up to Club Dispute Panda, all right? We drink water here because I'm on a 75-day uh, hard situation, so that's what we're drinking, okay? We're drinking water in the club. Um, we are going to go over the world's most effective and powerful AI software. My goal here is to help you learn how to utilize the software we're going to um, set up the software in real time. We're going to load a client and do our first round of letters all together in real time today. So I like to go over a few things. So as you guys are with me, I do talk about drip money. If you hear me say drip money or passive money, that is a, a gem that I'm going to drop on how you guys can make money with ease, because that is definitely something I like to tell y'all about. Um, so that's one. Number two, I'm going to tell you guys how the system can pay for itself in, 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 respect to how you're going to set up your clients within the software. And on today, I'm going to show you guys how to utilize the software, whether you are on the free platform or the pro platform, and you are able to process your round for free. Okay. So we're going to go through, hey, Ms. Brown, look at she got a good face. Look at you looking beautiful. Welcome. I like when y'all turn on y'all camera. Mr. Crawford knows I like cameras. Hey, Anthony Brown. I love cameras because I could kind of gauge when like people don't understand what I'm saying. Cause listen, I'm a mama for my kids don't be understanding what I'm saying. And adults don't be and heck, I don't be understanding what I'm saying sometimes. So we we gonna get into it tonight. And we're gonna start just to let you know we're gonna cover the pricing. We're going to cover the training and we're going to cover contacts. We will go over a lot of the pro features when I'm in the platform because I like to give you guys accessibility to kind of see what's going on in real time, okay? So pricing, because we about the money, okay? We want to make money and we want to get money. We need to figure out how this works. So Dispute Panda is the first 100% pay-as-you-go base system, which means you don't have an overhead every single month where you have to pay to gain access to the platform. Now, there is a version that does come with a monthly pricing, and we will cover what that goes over, but you guys can effectively and efficiently, and I'm not saying this just because I work here. I'm saying this because before I started being a part of the training staff, one of the things I was was an active user, um, and I had a group and I brought this particular platform to the group. And at that time, it was only the free version. And it was $17 per month per round. This was before Credit Dino came out. The system was set up for people who wanted to have a safe space to house their clients' information, right? Be able to do Metro 2 factual com uh disputes and if you are a seasoned person again i've been doing credit pair on and off for 19 years if you're a little seasoned out there and you have your own letters you have a safe space for you to put the letters in so i originally was on the free version for many many moons okay and then they rolled out the pro version and they gave a sample where you paid one dollar for 14 days and then you were billed 197 thereafter um, with that, there are a lot of upgrades that you get with the pro and I will take you guys through so you can see what the benefits are, but the pro gives you a safe client portal access. Your clients can upload their own documentation. It gives you more breathing room to where the client kind of can move some of it along. You also have access to them signing a contract within the pro. Um, and there's some cool integrations that you can move with Zapier, um, when you have the pro version, okay? Um, also, there's the pro for the year, so you get a nice little discount, okay? Now, I like to go to the training tab next because a lot of times I feel that people go to the training and the very first thing that they do is scroll down. And I wanna stop everyone from doing that. So every single call, I always say, hey guys, at the very top, it has a free download. The reason this is, is because Dispute Panda found out that there were a lot of people coming onto the platform that had never done credit repair before. And they, they were trying to fix their own credit or fix their family's credit. And they were like, hey, I don't really know where to get started. What should I do? So we created 
this was our original flow. Like I said earlier, y'all, we had the red attack, blue attack, okay? A lot of us knew when we were supposed to talk to the secondary bureaus. There were some people that didn't even, and we call, a lot of people call it the secondary bureau, but there are other consumer reporting agencies out there. And Dispute Panda gives you the most prevalent ones that normally have an account for your client. So we, there were several things that were said by the consumers that were us, utilizing the platform. And one of them was like, hey, we don't know when to send letters to the secondary bureaus. When do I see, do a CFPB complaint? I also want a flow that I don't have to do certified mail for. Oh, wait, I also want a flow that doesn't have to be in color, right? So all of these requests were made and they went back into the, I call it the lab, and they curated a flow that would help and answer all of those things. So with this particular flow, you do not have to actually send anything certified. It doesn't have to be in colored. Um, and it tells you when you should move on to the next uh, series or sequence of events, okay? This flow will work whether you are on the pro or you are on the free plan. So don't get... Uh, stuck where it says Dispute Panda Pro and the uh, Credit Dino attack flow. If your client is using Identity IQ, Smart Credit, this flow will still work for them. The difference is you will not have accessibility to the creditor letters. So on the free platform, you're only getting letters to the three major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. The creditors are the people who actually you owe the debt to or they allege you owe the debt to. So like Capital One, LVNB, Midland Credit, like those are all the entities that would be out there that you would be able to get letters specifically to them if you are on the pro platform and you're using Credit Dino. But if you are not, you can still use this flow and you will still be successful through the process. Because again, I use the free and I can, if y'all go to my timeline and y'all scroll back, your girl was still getting results on the free platform and before Credit Dino rolled out. And now I am an advocate for Credit Dino and I will tell y'all that secret when we get to the drip money. But make sure that y'all are clicking on free download so you can see the flow. Now, if we are not here, myself and David, we are not here to pull up to the club uh, Panda with you and you want to know how to do something, how to import a report, you can literally go through and we have everything step by step for you, okay? The next tab I want to take you guys to is the contact tab. I'm also going to drop something in the chat for you guys. That is free 99 because I like to give away stuff while y'all are on this call. And one of the products that I leverage is called Loom, L-O-O-M. Loom allows me to go ahead and do a screen recording of whatever issue I'm having for that particular client or that particular file. It gives me a code that I can put right here. And as soon as someone in the back office clicks on it, I am able to go ahead and actually um, see that someone watched it. It's a great way to recap the file for your client. So if you're doing an update, like I'm a person that does everything kind of overnight. I know that's horrible, but like if I can't sleep, I'm normally in the office until like maybe two, three o'clock in the morning. So I have it set where I can do a Loom video, record it, and then create an email for the client, but the email doesn't go out until after 8, 8 a.m. the next day. But now I can see when my client has clicked on the text message to watch the video or clicked on it via email to watch the video. The same thing would work here when you're talking to customer service. So if you're having a glitch, a lot of times people write it out, but it's so much easier if you just actually record the video and they can see what's going on. And that way you kind of have a, you can gauge when they're going to return the response to you. Customer service is open seven days a week. 24 hours a day. So that does make it feasible. If you have specific document questions, subscription question, any issues relating to a client, you can use client support. If you have some general question, like you want to talk to them about press or <laughs> beta testing or partnership, you can go through that as well. All right. Any questions on what I've covered so far, guys? Nope. No questions. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So now we're going to go to the sign up. So what I'm going to tell you is when you get to the sign up, 
Um, if you are going to utilize this software yourself, you need to have two different emails. So if you do not have a business email, like my business email is support at Evolved Life Now, right? If you do not have a business email, but you have a personal email and you're going to sign up under your personal email, you'll want to create another email to give you accessibility um, into the system. If you are saying, well, my credit score is great. I don't have a problem. I haven't been late on anything. Please take into account that most credit reports have 80, 87% of credit reports have errors or outdated information on there misspelled names, out-of-date addresses. So just because your score may not be impacted, there still could be information that is not accurate there. So you want to make sure that you put yourself in the system because it lets you know how the system flows, number one, as you being a test client. And number two, it gives you the ability to also know what the client is going to experience as they go through the process with you, okay? So I'm going to sign up here. Um, phone number and I'm going to show you where you guys can go to change this information um once if you guys decide to turn it into a full-fledged business um I'll show you where you can change it in the system um if you do not have a company name that's fine the system is going to default to your first and last name okay Okay, that's right. That's right. Okay. I like free y'all. So that means I'm gonna click this button that says email me about any special offers, products or resources because I like free. Okay, like I said, I have four kids, and they eat me out of house and home. So what do I like free? <laughs> I'm, I'm nosy January, February, give me all the details. Okay. So once we have that set up, we have the ability to go ahead. Let me move this to the top here. All right, all right, all right. So we get to the service agreement. I'm not going to read the service agreement today, but it does tell you what Dispute Panda is allowed to do, what you're allowed to do, what it looks like in the system. You do have to scroll through it and accept. Now, I am going to go through the system without validating the email because as you can tell, I made a fake email address. Um, the system will still work. Best practice is that within 24 to 48 hours, go ahead and verify your email so that the system can work uh, can keep you in and you don't have any missed documentation, right? Um, let me this up. So this is the main dashboard. We're going to go over the full dashboard. We're going to go down the sides and then I'm going to open up for any questions and then we're going to load the client in and do the actual first round of disputes, okay? So if you are wanting to search for clients, there are two ways to do it. You can see the rounds information, missing documents, birthdays, up here, you can search for the client, okay? You do have to have three characters in order to find the client, or you can click on the client tab here, and you can see your active clients, inactive clients, import any clients from any other software that you're leaving, or add new client onto the system, which we're going to cover in a minute. That's on the main dashboard. Now, one way that you can earn drip money is by clicking on this button here that says earn free credits. With that, you can click accept. Once it goes live, what happens is you have a partnership affiliate link that will be sent to you and you'll be able to get certain commissions off of anyone that signs up under your particular link. So if you are a realtor that knows other realtors that might want to come into the credit repair space and want to use Dispute Panda, you can give them your affiliate link once it goes live and that way they have accessibility to all of the information that's there, right? Right. Um, if you are a person that's in the car dealership, um, like Tom, I know car Tom is a wonderful car salesman. And because Thank of you. that, you're welcome, honey. <laughs> because of that, he might have other people that are at other car dealerships. And again, they have they have conventions and things of that nature. So they will be able to go ahead and do that as well, right? Any idea when this goes live? I have a list of realtors that could use it. I do not know when it's going to go live, but I know that as long as you click that email button on the like on the sign up page, as long as you opted in, you will have access to it. If you click this here, um, if you click accept, once it goes live, you will get an email with your own referral code. Um, so as long as you did either one of those things, you'll be good to go. Great question. Yep. See, I love it. 
The next thing is becoming an affiliate. Um, well, you can upgrade to Dispute Panda Pro. Like I said, it gives you the portal payment forms, which I kind of showed you guys a little bit earlier, but we'll dive into that a little bit more in a second. But another way that you can make drip money is by becoming an affiliate. So Credit Dino pays you anywhere from $8 to $22 for every client that signs up for credit monitoring under your link. It's as simple as you just putting your information in here. It will take you to the next screen and give you your own affiliate code. What I personally do is I put that affiliate code in my link tree. I put it in my story sometimes like, hey, y'all, it's the 15th of the month. It's the first of the month. It's the 30th. I know you want to buy that new car, but can you? I don't know. Pull your credit, right? Like you can come up with different ways that you can do that. So this is another way for you to get drip money when it comes to your clients. Um, the reports tab kind of gives you the information as to what's going on in your, in your account over the month. We did go over clients already. So we're going to jump into letters. Any letters that are generated for your clients, you are able to see them here. Um, if you have told the system to mail the letters out for you there are specific parameters so we have the mail goes only goes out monday through friday hold on one second miss brown has a question what should, you said affiliate question mark what's your question boo oh i didn't know i didn't have the um, microphone so when you say affiliates are you speaking like um like uh, different credit monitoring systems and stuff like that, like Credit Sesame or Identity IQ and stuff like that? Or what do you mean by credit affiliate? So are you talking about what, when I was talking about the credit dyno? Mm -hmm. Like you said, okay. you if they sign up through your link. Mm -hmm. So yes, I get paid for any person that has the credit, that signs up for credit dyno under my affiliate link. So they pay $29.99 a month. Of that $29.99 a month, I get $8. The, their mm -hmm. packages that go up higher, so you can potentially make more. You can make up to $22, depending on the package you choose to present to your clients with mm -hmm. Credit Dino. Now, there's several benefits with Credit Dino that the other credit monitoring services don't provide. So number one, by default, Credit Dino was created for Dispute Panda. So it's the data points and the integration are, I think of them as like husband and wife. They're meant to be together, right? That's number one. So number two, because of the fact that the system is reading everything, it is processing and tracking kind of what happened on the last round versus this round and being able to, to track what's the best round for the particular client. And that helps because they will make new attack flows based on the information that they're collecting with the credit monitoring and the system being together, right? Also, Credit Dino gives you seven-year report. So like, think about when you go to my, my FICO score or myfico.com, you're getting the full seven years. All of the other credit monitoring services are only giving you the two-year report. So the only thing you can see is the two-year snapshot of what's going on with your client. The reason that this is important is because I've been in several calls where people are like, Oh, they say that they're delinquent on their child support, but their child support payment shows that it's on time. Or they say that they're been they're in derogatory status with the cable bill or with the let's not say cable, their car payment, but their car payment shows that it's on time, right? And it's because it was derogatory just outside of that 24 month window, but you can't see it because the credit monitoring is only showing you a 24 month window. With Credit Dino, you get to see the full seven-year report. No other credit monitoring software is doing that right now. So that gives you a different layer of conversation. And I'll go into like what that conversation looks like when we get to the loading the client in, but that helps you. So yes, this does give you a safe space to where you're able to make money, even if you're not doing credit repair. So I've told people like, if you decide like, hey, I'm not willing to do credit repair anymore, you can still keep the link and still post the link on your social media and still get paid drip money from people having it. Because I have a client right now who they actually have not been my client for about a year and a half. They still pay their credit monitoring. I'm still making money off of that credit monitoring. And if they ever want to come back, I also don't have to pay for an attack because I get, 70, I get a free round of attack every 35 days that they're in the system, right? Gotcha. So it's okay. a win-win. Does that make sense? I think I could. 
It does. I think because I've been hiring people to do this, then I signed up for this other class and it linked me to you guys. But this is pretty much when people are telling me to get like identity IQ or something like that in order mm -hmm. to do credit repair. It's similar to this, except you guys do um, Credit Dymo. Yes, because Credit Dino was okay. built for Dispute Panda. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. So okay. it's the, it's the it's... system that talks. Now, you can still use Identity IQ. You can still use all of that. Just mm -hmm. bear in mind, you're going to pay the $17 for the round of attack, where if your client is on Credit Dino, you're making $88 at minimum, and you're getting and you're getting a free round of attack. So you're up $25. I like being up. Okay, I'm short. Gotcha. So I don't, yeah. I don't okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. I figured it out now. I think I just, I know what I'm on now. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. I love it. Okay. So that was, oh, we were on letters. So letters go out Monday through Friday. If you send it out at 12 p.m. in the system, if you're telling the system to mail your letters out, um, it will go out the same day if it's done by 12 p.m. Excuse me. After 12 p.m., it goes out the next business day. You are able to track the information and I will show you guys, you can click this I and you'll be able to see the delivery. So whether the only way you can track it is if you're using certified mail. However, the system still tells you like since the letter was generated at this time, you can allow or you can receive the information at this time. Like the letter should be delivered within four days and you can have that level of expectancy. Where is the link? For the affiliates like real okay so back on the main screen when you click on earn free credits and you click accept that puts you here to be an affiliate or if you go here and you click on referrals you can click here to be an affiliate once you go once it goes live you will get an email with your affiliate link that you can then pass out so it's not live right now but you still want to hit the accept so that once it goes live, you'll have your own affiliate link. Great questions, y'all. Okay. The inbox is something that you are able to have access to only on the pro version. And this is where you and your clients can have dialogue um, safely, privately, without any issues. Now, a lot of people have always asked what the portal looks like or what does the client see? So I like to give y'all the tea. Hold on one second now. This is what your client actually sees when they log into the portal. So it has nothing that has Dispute Panda on it. If you upload your logo, your business name, and all of that stuff, that is actually what's going to populate on the system for you, for your clients to see. They'll be able to see the dashboard. They can see, they can send you a message. They can pay their invoices. They can see what the progress looks like. And this is what it looks like for your client on their end if you have the pro. So this is the Save Client Access Portal. This is the main dashboard. And then they can kind of click through and dip and do from there. So I wanted to go ahead and give you guys that shot of what they see. The reports tab, I love this tab. That was what I was showing you guys earlier today. So hang on, let me, so this is what the report tab looks like. It breaks down um, the deletions that you've had, the increases that you've had, the total amount of debt that you have on the company level. But what I like is on the client level, you also have the ability to get this as well. So not only are you able to do um, a social media share sample, of the client specifically, you can actually do it of your company. So this gives you the ability to talk your talk, George, and say, I've deleted six, $603,000 worth of debt, right? Why aren't you flexing with my company? Like, that's a real, that's a real question. Like, why, why aren't you working with me? And you're able to go ahead and share this on a month to month basis. You can actually change the parameters um, so that you can see what you've done in the last seven days, the last 30 days. And I think it goes up to 60. I'll check in a minute for you guys to see. But this is on the company level as well as on the client level. You're able to see those reports. The subscription tab is where you can go make payment forms, onboarding forms that you can embed into your websites, or you can put in a QR code when you go to different speaking engagements. You can create your own plans. It's also where you connect your merchant service, okay? Okay. You can also get to the training platform as well as customer service contact through here on the side panels. 
And to get to the settings, you can either click on the balance bar or you can click these three dotted lines down here and go to settings. I like to start from the top and we're going to go to profile, okay? The profile is your particular information. So if you ever change and you're like, hey, I want to change it from this email to another email, you'd come here and make those setting changes. You can put your profile picture in here, but please note that the picture will only apply to you unless you have the pro. So if you have the free, no one's seeing this picture because you don't have a safe client access portal. No one's seeing anything. Okay. Um, if you change your profile and you decide that you're going to be a company, you get your logo together, you get your company name, you get the website, all of the things you can plug in here as well as your privacy policy. You can put your business address in here. You can literally put your contract. Um, I'm going to drop a sample contract in the chat. If anyone is in need, please make sure you're checking the parameters of your state, but always uh, pay attention uh, that you have a kind of starting point somewhere to begin. Now, please remember, if you have the free, this contract is going nowhere. So you would have to send the client a contract different um, separately so that you have it on record that they did hire your corporation to dip and do for them, okay? If you have a VA like Mr. Crawford was talking about, instead of giving your VA your contact information, you can actually go ahead and put their name in and their email address, and they will have direct access to the platform without having to use your username and password to get in. Um, so it makes it a little bit safer that no one has to have access to your password, okay? The affiliate links, if you have the pro, you can put all of your affiliate links in here and you can leave them all open. So that way your client has a choice as to what credit monitoring service they wanna go with. Or you can be like me and turn all of these suckers off and only put my affiliate link here for this one, hit save. And that way, when they go into the save client access portal and they go into their dashboard and they're uploading their IDs and they're doing all those things, it will only redirect them to Credit Dino because I like to be in the black and not the red, okay? <laughs> so that's just my thing. If you want to change the addresses of the credit bureau because you're seeing that you're getting a lot of responses from one particular area, that is cool. You can click on this little button right here and you can change the address. And what will end up happening is the letter will print to this new address for the credit bureau um, for availability. If you don't want to change it, you don't have to. I'm, just for the record, these are this is the most up-to-date addresses. The credit bureaus do have like seven or eight different addresses. So sometimes people do one round to one address, change the address, and then plug in the next round. Completely up to you how you want to navigate the waters. Um, the billing tab is where you can go ahead and load your funds. One of the things that I love about this is that the system, the back office recognized like, hey, people were either loading $20 or $60. So they decided to do a subscribe and save. So now if you sign up every 30 days, you'll be billed $20, but you will receive $30 or you can sign up for the $60 option and you will get billed $60, but you will get $90. That's only for this uh, subscribe and save option. If you run out of money and you've hit the 30 days, you know, hasn't hit, hasn't hit the 30 days, you would be able to buy in bulk. Please note that this is only the amount that you're putting in there. So it doesn't matter that you're on the subscribe and save plan. It will only give you whatever you put or you key in for you to sign up for. You can also add your standard payment. They also do ACH. And you can upgrade to Dispute Panda for $1 right here as well. I love it, I love it. The invoice tab is where you can see all invoices and statements as uh, for your platform, for your client, as well as yourself if you're going to the pro. You can also see any activity, which is any rounds of letters that you've generated any mailing that is supposed to go out for you and any attack credits that are on the platform, okay? 
The integration tab is where you can connect Zapier to this platform. So let's say a client comes in and their end goal is to buy a home. You can go ahead and load them in the system. If you have a Zapier connection and you have like an email sequence, you can have an email sequence go with it so that when the client comes into this platform, Zapier puts them in your email sequence platform. And that way they can have a whole curated um, letters and everything that goes out. Okay. And then, of course, we get back to the referral link where you can sign up to be an affiliate. So we have covered all of the settings. We have covered all of the uh, tabs on the side. Any question before I load my test client in from what you guys saw so far? Any question? All right, all right, all right. So we're going to dive in here now. So remember I said I have to have a different, I have to have a different username and password. I'm sorry, I had different email address when I'm going in and adding myself in as a client, right? So you want to make sure that you're putting this respective information on each line. What that means is that we don't want Raquel May all on one line. All of this information is going to be transposed into a letter. So we want to make sure that everything is legible and in its respective places. So it prints out on the letter properly. Personally, you do not need the middle name of the client. You do not need the um, suffix. So you don't need junior, the third, the fourth. I personally have worked where I have the father, the son, the mother, like all of them together. So because of that, if there's a George fourth, fifth, or sixth, I have put it in, especially if they utilize it. Now, one of the things that I tell my clients is when they're applying for stuff, do not use your middle name unless that is something that you have consistently done and it's on your ID, like it's on all of your things. But just because the, the credit bureaus, the way that they import the information can screw up the name. So your middle name can go into the system as your first name, and that causes more information on the personal information side. So just for clean aesthetics, I always tell my clients, do first name, last name, that is it, that is all, when you're going through. Um, boom. All right, then you can put your phone number. The phone number can remain the same on all the platforms. Like whether you're the owner and the user, the only thing that has to be different is the email address. When we get to the address, guys, if you have a unit, an apartment number, you want to put it on the street address line, but you want to make sure that all of the other information is going again in its respective places. You want to make sure that you have the right birthday. Y'all miss my birthday. It's okay. I'm not going to hold it against y'all. It's all right. Don't worry about it. We're going to be friends again. Um, <laughs> but you're going to put the birthday in there. If you have the pro, you will click this box right here. And then as you can see, I don't have the pro. So it says, uh, go sit down. That's what it told me. It says sit down right now. Um, so I have to upgrade to pro if I want them to have it. But this only sends the information out if you have a pro. So what that will do is send them the, the an email. They can click on it. The When I say they, the client will be able to click on it. Oh, hey, happy birthday. My husband's birthday is on the 15th. So we are celebrating all month. We have been to Dallas. He went to an award show with me in Dallas this weekend, last weekend, this weekend, we're supposed to be dipping and doing. And then next weekend is his official birthday. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet, but I got a couple days to figure it out. Okay. We got a couple days, but happy early birthday or hopefully is it early? Mr. Mr. Crawford, your birthday hasn't come yet. Yeah. Okay. So I, on uh, May 25th. Oh, well, happy belated birthday, my love. Okay. I hope you had a good time. Hope you had a good time. Yeah. Okay. My, my husband's is uh, June 15th. So now that we're here with the client, what you are going to do is you have to make sure that the required spaces are filled out. I like to go over this before we load anything in the system is what documentation you guys need in order to support your client. The social security card is optional. It's optional. 
does this view panda put signatures on the letters i believe if you have the pro you know what let me answer that question because i got the pro hold on I have client letters that's supposed to go out tomorrow, guys. So no, on the letters that are generated for the client, you only get the documentation. I include, like I said, I include a power of attorney. So because I have the power of attorney with their signature, it goes out. But no, it does not put their signature on it at all. Great question. Um, when you're going through the identification, as you guys can see on the screen, there's only two spots that are required. It's your proof of identification and your proof of address. This is the list of the things that you want to get. You want to make sure that list one matches list two. The exception to that rule is the social security card, your passport, um, your divorce decree, your birth certificate those things don't have your address on it okay so because of that if your drive your your client's driver's license or your driver's license has you in a different state you do not want to use that driver's license if you're saying that you now live in Tennessee but your ID is from Michigan right you want to use your your social security card your passport your birth certificate something else um where do we get a POA from I have a power of attorney that's in my contract. Um, some Depending on who's helping you write your contract, you would be able to get it uh, that way, or you can pull one. Do you need to get power of attorney to get responses? No, you do not need it. I just happen to put, I just happen to have my contract written that way. You do not need a power of attorney. The, there is nothing in the law for credit repair that states that you have to that you that you are not able to hire someone to do credit repair for you. The only place that it's sticky to do credit repair is in the state of Georgia because it, they want you to have a nonprofit organization and they want you to be connected to an attorney. We are trying to get that litig that that law overturned, but as of right now, that's how Georgia is set up. Oh, that's why you know paper delete is awesome <laughs> for Georgia. Um, so proof of address, if you're utilizing a bill that comes to the current address, gas bill, water bill, cable bill, any residential bill, the rule of thumb is you want to have your clients um, give you an updated bill every 60 to 90 days because we all know that the credit bureaus will try to stall on us and this is a great way to stop the stallation, okay? Is that a word we're going to use today? That's what we're going to use today. All right, so now, when you get the system, sometimes you'll notice that your clients will put a big sheet of paper with their ID or get all the backgrounds. Honey, just zoom in, crop and save. That's why I love this little system here. Because the goal is for you to get everything on two, no more than three pages. Sorry, one to two pages, not three, not four. And you don't want to give the credit bureau more information that they, than they need. So for instance, this bill, first of all, you see how they got passed through? We, they don't know their business. So we're just going to go ahead and crop down to where we need. We're capturing the date. We're capturing, capturing the address and we're going to crop and save. Okay. And you are good to go. Now, in this particular case, I do have the social security card. I will put it in. It is not necessary for us to move on to the next step. Okay. If your client gives it to you, by all means, you can leverage it. You do not have to if the other documentations are in accordance the way you need to. Now, if you are using the other credit monitoring softwares, please note that every month you are going to have to log into the other credit monitoring software, refresh the credit report, and then come back into this platform to go ahead and um, move on to the next round of disputes. However, with Credit Dino, you do not have to do that. So with Credit Dino, you can actually plug the information in here. And every 35 days, you just come back and you click on this one-click import here and it will pull in your client's credit report. Is that if the client is in Georgia or if your company is in Georgia? So if your company is in Georgia and you want to be a credit repair person, you have to have a nonprofit and they do like you to be affiliated with an attorney. If your client is in Georgia, you shouldn't really be doing it. Just saying. 
unless you are doing a pay per delete model would be the best practice for the per for the people in Georgia. Um, but legally, that's how Georgia is set up. You're not supposed to be doing it unless you are a nonprofit that is registered in that state. Okay. Just a heads up when it comes to Georgia. I missed, I missed that because I am in Georgia. Okay. What happened? So you want to go to your Secretary of State site or you want to search CRO for Georgia because in the state of Georgia, they want you to have a nonprofit and they like you to be pay per delete when you're in the state of Georgia. They do not like you to have monthly services because they think that credit repair is a joke in the state of Georgia. Just a heads up. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's a little, it's a little difficult. Um, but once you have loaded your client in from Credit Dino from that one click, it tells you right here, thank you for using Credit Dino. You've earned a free round of attack. And then down here, it says one free attack awarded per client per month. Every time a three bureau is pull limited one attack per 35 days. So let me tell y'all what happened. Okay. Cause y'all, you know, I be telling y'all my mistakes. So I got a VA. That wasn't my daughter. So my daughter, she has everything tracked. She follows the steps and I hired this VA. And I guess this VA is used to using other platforms. So they update their clients every 30 days. I don't know why, because I told them I was a 40 to 45 day company, but for whatever reason, on the 30th day, they went in and they pulled the client's information. Well, I got billed $17. Why you ask? Because it wasn't 35 days. So every 35 days is when you get a free round of attack. If you pull the credit report one day earlier, I'm telling y'all right now, like Jesus love a baby now, you are going to be billed $17, okay? I looked at her and I wanted to cuss, okay? But I left it alone because we ha all have to learn, right? So it cost me like 70 bucks that day because of the fact that they utilized and they pulled a little bit early. So I went back through my plan. And this is why onboarding is very important when whether you're onboarding a VA or you're onboarding a family, that there's a clear process of how things should be done because that just cost me 70 bucks. But let's say I would have had five VAs that wasn't understanding that my process is a 40 day process it would have cost me more money, right? So you wanna make sure that you have those SOPs, which is standard operating procedures so that everyone's on the same page. Apparently she said she just missed it. So it's okay, no big deal. So when we go through the process here, um, once you have all of this, when you scroll back up to the top, now you see disputing is listed. So you click on the disputing tab and now here's where the work begins, okay guys? So. If your client has public records, it will be notated on here. The system is going to break it down with inquiries at the top. Public records would normally go here. And then any accounts that's impacting your client's score would go here. Okay. As you guys can see over here on the side, it says I have one free round of attack. So I'm going to do my first round of attack with no money in the bank. Y'all going to see. Just, just, just hear me out. Check me out. Okay. So. The system is never going to pick inquiries. If there are public records, the system will pick the public records. It will also pick any accounts that is impacting your client's credit score. So you do not have to worry about that. But on the inquiry side, hunty, you need to worry about it. So now what will happen is as you are looking at your client's profile and you're looking at these inquiries, rule of thumb is you do not want to touch a an inquiry that is attached to an open and active line of credit or credit card because you run the risk of getting that account shut down. Now, I have heard people say I've done it before and the account didn't get shut down. That is true. Some people that happens, but I have seen a lot more people lose access to that line because you're doing a dispute on the inquiry so that creditor discover will shut you down. I've seen Capital One shut you down. So just for safe purposes, that is not something that you want to do for your client. Okay. Now, what you would do is you can put JP Morgan Chase or you can, you know, JM, JPMC. You can go ahead and search. And that way you can see if you put control F or command F, you can quickly get to see if that client has that account. 
and if it's open. If it's open, we're not disputing the inquiry. Now, if normally the inquiry is not impacting the clients after that 12 month window, I've had some of my team members say, um, oh, if the account hasn't posted yet, again, I'm still not doing the inquiry. I'm not touching the inquiry because I, again, the exception to the rule for me is a mortgage or an auto payment, because I don't care if they pull that off the account, you know, that if it's not, if it's not going to impact my client score for the full calculation of it, it's not a major issue. However, it is a major issue if that credit card gets closed, because that's affecting their utilization. And now that's going to impact their payment history going forward. So if you have an account that has not posted yet, but the inquiry is showing and it's attached to a credit card, you do not touch it, okay? Just as a rule of thumb. So you would search the inquiries. I personally select all the inquiries that apply. Um, so if I do not see a city card, let's say, let's say I do city card. Okay, this person does have a city card, but let's say I didn't see a city card, then I would select it. I would select all the ones that apply to that particular client. So U.S. Bank. This is only this is the only place U.S. Bank shows up. So I would select this option and I would select all the ones that apply to that particular client. And then you hit save filter. Now I'm going to go back and show you guys something really quickly before we move forward. And this is just a brief insight of what my consultation looks like when I'm speaking to my particular client. So this little eye icon, this is again only with the credit dyno platform, I have the ability to kind of dip and do the way I'm doing. So I can click the eye icon and it opens up some information for me. So number one, it tells me that this has already been written off as a profit and loss write off. It tells me that this was an installment loan. My client needs to have installments and revolving. Why? Because credit mix is worth 10% of the FICO score, which equates to roughly 55 points, right? So now I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm looking at their profile. What are you missing? What do you need? Okay. So we're able to look at this. Okay. We know this was a banking. This was an installment, which means it was a loan, not a credit card. Okay. I'm also able to see the payment history. I can see that they have not continued to make payments on this. Their payment history is only 55%. So now if I click on multiple accounts and their payment history is like this, we're having the dialogue because 35% of your overall FICO score is worth roughly 192.5 points. If you are not paying on time, you're not getting those particular points. We have the discussion of what on time is for the credit bureau versus what on time is for the creditor because they're two different avenues, right? After I'm able to have this conversation, I would, let's say she has a credit card. So this, this is a credit card. So using this as an example, I would click on account health. The account health is going to tell me how much account is she accounting? How much is she utilizing, right? Now we can have a conversation and say, hey, your utilization is over 30%. Everyone keeps on telling people that 30% or lower gets you the highest points with your utilization. That is not correct. If you want to be in the 700 club, ideally your utilization needs to be below 20%. If you want to be in the 800 club, your utilization needs to be below 10%, right? So these are numbers that they can play with because utilization is worth 165 points. The more you're using, the less points you're earning, right? So we're looking at all the components that are adding up to our client's FICO score, and we're giving them this knowledge. Hey, how are you paying your bills? What are you doing? So you're able to have a very detailed conversation with your client in real time as to what they need to get done and how they need to pivot, okay? So that's this one. All right, so now we can hit save. Oh, wait, no, I forgot one more thing. I'm so sorry, y'all. I need to eat. I need to eat. Okay, so let's say you guys are seasoned and you have your own curated letters that you want to utilize. This system allows you to do that. So you can save different templates. So if you know code 15UC3 says that you can't call my mom, let's just say that's a letter that you've used before, 
you can use that template. And what will happen is the series of letters will print out for all of the other accounts. And for this account, it will print out that curated letter that you have saved. You can also save this letter. So if every time you have to do a 1099 or every time you have to do a don't call my mama letter, you can actually go ahead and save it and, and store it on the system so you can use it over and over again. If you change your mind and say, never mind, I don't want the letter, then you just go ahead and remove it. And then you can move on to the next round and you would pick your letters. Here's where you have to make sure that you're paying attention to the guide. To uh, Mr. Tom's point earlier today, Mr. Tom said, oh, well, I did one round here and then I turned around and I did another round of letters. You want you don't want to lose the freebie that you have, right? So you want to get really clear on what letters you're using. Rule of thumb that I tell my mentors, I tell people who book a call with me, the rule of thumb that I give out is that you want to make it your business that you're tracking whatever you're doing. So no matter which method you're utilizing, I always say to create like an Excel spreadsheet that says, hey, Mr. Dominique, I sent out this letter on this day. This was the response. These were all the things that I got off, right? And that way you can pivot and maneuver the way you need to. Um, so the first round of letters, according to the new flow, is a punch of fury, supreme boosted. If you have the pro, you would send the creditor letters. This round would go out handwritten. It is single-sided. It does not need to be colored. And I would be sending all the letters to the secondary bureaus. So now I go back to Dispute Panda. I would hit start round. I would select Punch of Fury. I will click the handwritten box. If I have the pro, I would check this box for generate creditor letters. I will then click this option that says Supreme Boosted. And then I would hit start round. Once I type confirm, I hit start round. And now it is generating the letter for me. I don't have to do anything at all. And I didn't have to pay for it. Now, it also says on that form that I have to do the static letters, which are the letters that are going to the other credit reporting agencies. So I would go back and hit handwritten rule of thumb. I just scroll all the way down because the system jumps and I will select factor trust, microtel, data X, clarity, credco, ARS, LCI, Novus, Lexus, Nexus. And then I would select start round and you will type confirm. Y'all are going to see it's going to tell, I'm sorry, you can hit start round. It'll print out. It's not going to print out because I don't got a dollar in it. Okay, see how it's being mean to me in front of all these people? <laughs> so you do have to have at least $1 for the static letters to print. If I wanted the system to mail out the letters for me, I would just select mail them out. I would change this from double-sided to single-sided. I would then add the dollar amount that is said is needed. And then I would come back in and tell the system to mail it out. If you do not mail it out, the system is going to generate as if you downloaded the letter. So you want to make sure that when it comes to the client, that you go in and you physically click download all so that you're able to print out the letters because the system is going to automatically go. Um, David, the question in the chat is when will the new mailing system start? I believe it has already started, but I'm going to ask David because he's the head of the mailing. So I will have him pull up to the club uh, with the silly missing in a minute. So he can tell you, David. Yeah, no, actually is, it started like a three weeks ago. Uh, we're uh, in the middle of developing like more system into it because right now we cannot handle like a lot of letters. Uh, we're in the middle of it, but uh, we're doing great. I think in one more month, we're going to uh, duplicate all the machines, all things concerning to the into the mailing for our customers and it's going to be like very busy and very nice for us it's I always developing mm -hmm. so it has been live for three weeks okay so if you can use it now as my friend would say n o e w that's how she say now okay keith <laughs> the system has 
10 different handwritten fonts so you don't have to do anything. The system will generate it in handwritten. If you do not select handwritten, it will be a typed letter. So it's nothing that you have to physically do. The letters are generated for you and you either mail it out or you download and print it out. Great question. Any other questions, guys? I'm going to take you through while you guys are thinking about it. If you want to know what was going on with your client's file, you can check history. You can go to letters. You can go to credit report. You can go to see the scores on the platform. If there are any invoices, you're able to see the invoices. Um, the notes tab is something that is for the pro. So if the client has bankruptcy, you have the ability to go ahead and send a letter specifically to the bankruptcy court to get the support that you need. And you can turn around and say, hey, I sent this letter to the bankruptcy court. Or let's say you send out the letters to all of the secondary bureaus and you get a letter back saying that the client doesn't have an account with Clarity. Well, then you would come in here and put the note in saying, hey, don't pull Clarity letter because they don't have Clarity. And this way you kind of tracking what you're doing with your client files. So we have created an account loaded our first client, completed our first round of attack. And y'all, when it's time for round two, round three, you come right back here, you click it, click it, one click import, it updates it and you do it again for month two. So you don't have to go through the whole sequence anymore. You're just coming in here every 35 to 40 days. You're clicking the one click import and you're sending and you're generating your next round of letters. If you have Credit Dino, if you do not have Credit Dino, you're going to log into that credit monitoring platform. You're going to update, update the credit report and then come back into the system. Does that make sense? Is it clear as mud to make sure I gave y'all the tea? Any other questions, guys? Ms. Brown, thank you for coming. I know that it was a new system, hopefully everything made sense. If you guys have questions, we are here. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure. Any questions, concerns, or comments, guys? I just need to review the, uh, because I am in the state of Georgia, so I need to get clarification on how to move forward with it. Absolutely. And there are some options that are available if you're in the state of Georgia for like DIY programs that they can do. What I tell my mentees when I'm helping them and they have DIYs, number one, you can offer where they can book a call, like a $37 package a month, where they can meet with you on a month to month basis and you can review the report with them. But you definitely want to check your state to see what you can do. From my understanding, again, I'm not in Georgia. So from my understanding, you can have pay per delete as an option, but you do have to be non nonprofit if you are setting up a credit repair business in the state of Georgia. Got it. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions, family? I don't see that I missed any in the chat. Hold on. Let me scroll because I've been doing too much. I have a question. How can I help, William? Well, this this is my first time doing it. Um, so I was interested in wondering if we can, if do you guys do a replay? Because I came on kind of late because of technical difficulties. And I'm trying to see, do you, can I get a replay? So, because exactly what you went over, exactly what I need to know, how to set up the account, how to load the information. Like, I need, I need to know. If it's like I watch this Absolutely. Again. Actually, so in the if you go to the community and you click on Dispute Panda Live, you can see the past recordings. And I have gone over this a, a billion times. So you can see it there. Oh, okay. okay. Also, you can visit our YouTube channel and you can see us there. Uh, see right. how Dominique talking? He always missing them a little show. So, hush, Dominique. So <laughs> you can go to our YouTube channel and the replays are there as well. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Thank you. All right. How do we have access to the community? So in the chat, if you scroll up a little bit, um, David dropped the link for the community. 
you can either sign in using your dispute panda login and once you get into the platform you will have access to all of the things if you're a pro member you get a little bit more access but if you uh, david's going to drop the link one more time so that you guys can get the link for the community and you can watch the replay there or you can watch the replay on the youtubes on the tubes of the youbes great question let me move this over here any other questions guys oh i already had it i knew that um let me see i want to make sure oh david dropped it in the chat thank you david I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Keep me on my tracks. Um. So yeah, you can watch the full replay there. And that way, if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, I promise you we will be here to support you accordingly. We are here Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the pro. Um. If there are no other questions, I will let you guys have the rest of your night. I thank you. Thank you so much for coming again, Mr. Crawford to Club Panda. You are VIP. I appreciate you. Happy, happy belated birthday. Um, thank you all that came in and had cameras on and were dialogue that were um having amazing dialogue. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments, I am definitely here to help. And if not, we will catch you next week on Monday for the free and tomorrow for the pro. Bye, guys. Do do do. Do 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 do. Let me go ahead and.